Hello there. If you are a teacher, probably I hope that you have already heard about Google Form. During this pandemic, we have been using this Google Form as a tool of assessment for the student and students understanding. Now, uh, many a times we are using Google Form uh, to create a short quiz for a particular chapter and test or let's say for a particular online test. So what I'm interested today to show you all is actually uh, how can you create or how can you make a quickly Google form like literally 50, 30 or 50 questions uh, MCQ based question from starting with a, uh, a word file. So as you can see here, I'm having this particular word file and this particular file contains uh, 30 different questions. So now what I'm interested in is I need to create a Google form that will be acting as a quiz, but I'll be taking this as the source. I'll type nothing on the Google form. So let's see how to do it. First thing you have to do is you have to type all the questions that you want. And here, as you can see, all the questions are already typed. So what you have to keep in mind is first line when you're typing is going to be your question. Then you have to place in enter and type your first option, second option, third option and fourth option. Now, in these, as you can see, A, B, C, D, four options are given and the correct option you have to give it as a star mark. Now, if you you have to put this, if you are going to automatically grade it using a tool called Flabero. It's very easy, very convenient. I'll show you how to do that. So here questions followed by the options. Then you have to put one, uh, you know, one on one point gap. Once you have placed enter, then you do type the second question. And there also you have to type all the option one below the other A, B, C, D. Now you might think that you don't need the A, B, C, D in the options, then you can get rid of that. You can do that without that also. So, but main thing you have to keep in mind in the formatting here is you need to type the options one below the other. That is after pressing the enter. And remember after the last one here, there should not be any gap. And when you are placing enter here also, there should not be any a space bar you should not use space bar or you should not have any gap in there so after you do that remember if you are having a, a longer questions for example let me show you something which i am having here statement based question many times you might get statement based question and here you have to make sure that you are putting all the statements in the same paragraph that means the question is one paragraph then you are placing all the four options below that so if you do not do this there will be a problem so make sure that you are following this pattern now this is my question this is my format but you all know that in google form when we send the link to the student we also need the name and we also need their email id so that we can release the score we can send the score or feedback at a later point of time so to do that again what i'm going to do is you after you type the first question i need is going to be the name of the student so let me type that and then i'll show you how to get this thing right so uh, let me type that so this is the name of the student and this is my question after that i need the answer so i'm going to hit enter now after this i have to leave it completely blank and i'm going to press the second enter now here i'm going to put my second question what i need is let's say the email id of the student you can place your class you can place roll number whatever you like you can do that but right now i need the email id of the student so let me type that also Okay, and then I need the answer for this. So again, I'm going to hit enter. So now after that, you're going to have a question. See, so now what the Google form will do is it is going to create a question for the name of the student. It is going to create a question for the email ID of the student. And then it is going to create MCQ based question for all of these. Remember, automatically we're going to grade it. So let's see from here how to proceed. So to do this, I'm going to save this particular file. So done and then I'm going to open the Google Drive. So to open Google Drive, you can simply type google.com or you can, you know, there you can, you can log in or you can simply hit here, go to Google Drive, choice is yours. Or you can simply try, dry, uh, type drive.google.com, choice is yours. Whatever you want to do, it, do it, get into Google Drive. Now, once you're here, I want to upload that question, that, uh, you know, file. So I'm going to hit on new. I'm going to upload file, file upload and I'm going to click on G form and then open it. Okay, so it is going to get uploaded. The file is uploaded. Now let me hit close here. 
and this one I'm going to open. So when you double click, it is going to load that Google, uh, you know, through Google Docs, it is going to load that MS Word file. But uh, for the add-on, we're going to use an add-on to create the Google form. It will not work with MS Word. So let me again go here, file. Okay, remember top left side and I'm going to save as Google Doc. Now this option. So once I hit that, it is going to open another file and it is actually going to save the entire thing as Google Doc. Now, to start the process here again, I have to go to add-on and get add-on. So we're going to use an add-on called gformit. And once the Google Marketplace is loaded, you can search the app gformit. As you can see, just type a little bit and then you get the option. So click on this and you get this one. Okay, remember this brown color logo. Now this one, uh, you have to click install and it is going to ask permission to continue. So click on continue, then you have to select the email ID that you have currently logged in. So I've selected that, then it is going to ask them permission, allow that. And then it is going to automatically get installed and it is going to give you an notification that yes, it has been installed. So now click hit done, close this one and then go to add on G format. Now remember when you actually do it for the first time, it is not going to ask anything. You will get this option of generate form. But when you do it next time, it is going to ask enable form. So at that time you have to enable the add-on and then you will get this uh, generate the form option. So click on that, allow it to work. And depending on the number of questions, this is going to take anywhere between a half a second, sorry, half a minute to a minute or so. So allow it to work. And once it is done, it is going to give you the links uh, for the editable Google form file. And also you'll get the live link and response sheet and the form response info. So you'll also get an email on your registered email, whichever email you're using, you'll get an email from gformit uh, team. And here, let me go to the editable one. So let me just uh, right click and open new link. So as you can see here, the Google form is ready. Now this one, how much time did it take? Once you have the file ready, right? Once you have the file ready and you hit add on in a minute, you can create the entire question. See, the entire question is ready. 30 questions I have typed. Let's say, supposedly I have typed in here would have taken me a minimum of half an hour to an hour. But here, within a few seconds, I would say, or a minute or so, I got the entire thing right. So name of the student, email ID, everything is done. Now what I'm left with is simply sharing the link. Now you can see response is only one. Now this one is the answer that you have selected. Whatever options you are given the star mark, that one is actually here. Now this one you're going to use for uh, uh, for gradation. So once uh, we are done with this, as you can see, very easy, very easily we are able to do it. So once you're done, you have to hit here and then you can shorten the link and you can copy it and then send it to the students for the actual appearance of the test. Now you have all the regular controls here. If you want to limit the response, collect email ID, you can have all of these. But again, as you know that you don't have to because you already have this particular one enabled. Now, another thing to keep in mind is make sure that you hit required for the name and also hit required for the email ID here. So uh, again, many of my students use Google mail ID or Gmail. So many times they type it wrong. So what I will do is I'll add a response validation where I can hit text and it should contain at the rate G mail.com many times they type it wrong g m i a l they type it many times i have seen that so you type that so next time when the student is typing anything at other than gmail they will not be allowed to submit the form so this will basically make sure that i can send back the answers i can send back the response to the child after he has uh, given the test so this is how you create a google uh, form from google docs in minutes literally in minutes so once you're done with it, we have to wait for the student or wait for the test to get over. And then we will basically continue with the next part that is evaluation. Now you might wonder what happens where the files are created. Remember all the files that you're talking about is going to be created here and you will be getting actually four files. See, this is a Microsoft file and this is the Google form that we created or the, sorry, not a Google form. This is the Google form we created. This is the doc file that we created right to start the add-on and this is the response of this particular google form so easy ones four files and you can access it at any point of time and that is how you get it done
So after you share the link with the student and you get the response, as you can see here, I have got four response. So again, what I've done is I have only filled this form. These are all my emails and uh, basically uh, randomly I have uh, filled this form. So once you get the response, you will be coming here and you'll get this button, actually this green one. So here, click on that and it is going to open a new form, uh, what do you call it? Google Jeep, uh, sorry, your Google Sheet. And in the Google Sheet, now you get all the options. The first one, as you can see, the name of the student, email ID and all the questions are in the first uh, line. And after that, you get uh, the responses here. So from here, you get student one, two, three. Here, the name of the students will actually appear and here, you'll get the email ID of the students. So here, uh, all the options that all the uh, options the students uh, have chosen, you'll be getting it here. So another question is, I need to evaluate this and to grade it and I have to send it to the student. So to do that again, I'll be just doing it in a very easy manner. Again, using add-on. So I'm going to click on add-on and I'll click on get add-on. Remember that again, this is a one-time uh, process that you have to do. So once uh, it is here, typically you'll be getting this one by default. So it is called Flavero. So click on that and hit install. So let it install. And uh, again, you have to do the same process of giving the permission, hit on the email and you have to allow that, right? And then once you do that, it is going to install and then you have to enable the Flowbero. Okay, you'll get again email notification for that also. So now again, you have to go to uh, Flowbero. Again, it is already coming here. You can close this one, go to add on Flowbero and here you get great assignment now if it is uh, you're doing it for the second time or subsequent times you'll be getting an option to enable flavero on the sheet so here because you installed it now it is directly giving you the option of great assignment so i click on great assignment and you'll see how the uh, process is very easy and very uh, easy to do it actually and sending the response and the email also so here for all the of question that you have chosen you have to either uh, select from th four options identify the student skip grading normal grading and hand by grade so by default it is going to select everything correctly but you have to choose you have to check once so name of the student must be identifies the student email id of the student identifies the students similarly if you are having class section or roll numbers all those will go on to identify the student and remaining all the questions that you're going to have that you put in normal grading and here you can see how many all the questions are chosen all the 30 and it is seen how much mark you want to give let's say here it is one but i want to it to be 10 marks i can do that let's say another question is let's say one mark i want to make it 10 marks or whatever point i want i can do that so let's say here it is going to be a six mark here let's say i want it to be four marks or let's say for everything you want to make it uh, two marks okay see as you can see you have to check everything here it is given identify the student protoplast is again this is a question so i'm changing it to normal grading and i'll say i'm going to give it three marks so once you check whether things are correct or not, if it is, it should be normal grading by default, but if it is not, check it once and then click on continue. Now, once you hit continue, then it is going to ask you, where do you have the answers? So remember the first one without name of the student or email ID of the student, that is going to be your answer. So hit on that, click on that and continue. Okay, and you can see, that you will get the option grading your assignment. If you get an error, just refresh uh, the entire page and you the work that it will work basically. See the grading is complete now. So what you will get here is you will get a summary of the entire thing. That means how much uh, a possible point is 72, 72 marks. What is the average? How many people have submitted and who has got the lowest or what is the lowest score? So as you can see here, you'll get a uh, name of the student and email ID and then possible points or their, their score basically along with percentages and then you'll get of which question they have done right which is they have not done wrong or which they have done the entire class is done right or wrong that's that part you'll be getting it here so once you're done here you have to share the grade with the student and to do that again you go to flavero and add on flavero and click on uh, share grades okay so you hit that and again it is going to ask you a few options uh, click on that. Uh, let me show you. So how you want to send it? Email ID, email address. So here, automatically select whatever whichever column is having the email ID. So email ID of the student will be selected. Grading is going to be shared by email. I want to include the answer key also, 
and if required you can add a custom message i don't want to so i can i can click on continue and you can see three grades are successfully shared so let me just open the email to show you how the mail has been sent so let's see We're getting it in my inbox as you can see here is your grades for g form responses so as you can see your grade this much and for each of the question the right or wrong everything is going to be given to the student so that is how you use google form to evaluate automatically using the flower thank you all